Right, okay, time for more videos, I think, because it's been a while since I've done any videos. So anyway, I'm just temporarily revisiting a few of my projects here. And I thought first I would revisit the vacuum tube Tesla coil project that I'm working on and trying to improve. So I thought I'd try to improve the power supply on this thing because I'm not getting enough voltage to make this thing produce a flame. It produced a lot of sparks earlier, which I will splice in. That wasn't supposed to happen. I've got a nasty little flush over right there. And it'll probably do it again when I plug it in. Anyway, I've got this transformer. Because I'm trying to get a good between 600 and 800 near the transformer. A lot of amps. And, well, this is it. So I've got about coming out of this transformer. It's going into the 17 volt input on this transformer. And I'm getting, uh, I don't know. And I'm getting about 300 volts out of this. Which goes into that. Which goes into this voltage doubler. And of course rectifies it. So in theory. And when I tested this without any load. I got about 960 volts out of it. Which sounds impressive. But unfortunately. When connected to the rest of the circuit, it pulls it down to only about 500 volts, or about 550 volts, which is a bit disappointing. And for the screen grid, well, I've got this transformer feeding this transformer, so we got mains going in this side, 12 volts going out that side, 12 volts going in this side, and mains coming out that side. Then that's just getting rectified and going into the screen grid. Oh, and what this is, well, that's nothing to do with this circuit. I will explain that in just a minute, but let's just turn this on and see what happens. Ah, there we go. And, of course, I can still do all the stuff you've seen a million times before, like light a fluorescent light wirelessly. And stuff like that. Now, trouble is, this produces a ton of interference. It's absolutely insane. And here's something I did earlier. Unfortunately, I wasn't recording. But I put this neon light, connected it like that, so that was on there, and the resistor was just sticking up into the air. And look what happened to the resistor. It literally caught fire. And I don't even know what, what value that was. I have no idea there was that much current going through it, just arcing into the air. But apparently, there was. And guess what? I'm going to try to recreate that. Okay, this is a 470k connected to the thing. Let's see what happens. All right, smoke test. Awesome. And here is the aftermath. There is just absolutely nothing left. So anyway, that project is on hold until I can find a better transformer. Preferably one that can give between 600 and 700 volts on the output. Anyway, what we're looking at here is another little project that I'm working on. Yes, it is another AM radio tuner. And I'll put up the schematic. There it is. And I decided to build it a little bit differently to what I normally do. And what I did was I printed out the schematic, then just placed all the components where they are on the schematic, wired it all up. So this pretty much matches the layout on the schematic. Of course a couple of components aren't quite in the same place but it's the same circuit. And it does sort of work but it does have a problem which I'll go into in just a minute. Oh and before I forget, now I don't know what your name is on YouTube, um, but Steve Gare, you mentioned, 
You PM'd me on Steam the other day asking me if I use a 10 MHz frequency standard. Well, in answer to your question, I don't. Because I really just don't have any kind of use for such a thing. I trust the readouts on my multimeters enough. So anyway, on to this radio receiver that is connected up to the computer right now, so we will be able to hear from it. And as I tune this in, you'll hear a couple of radio stations being picked up by it. And he moved, he, he swapped positions, he moved deeper and he said to Claudio Aldo, you go up. Well, Claudio Aldo scored the equaliser. I think Gigi was, was, was more mobile and perhaps a better player for it, but I think Julian... He Julie played well, he played well in set. Put a teaspoon in a cup and put some hot water on it. We didn't get all the one right there. It's incredible, I've gone through this, all the radios, all the two radio stations this thing can tune into, and it hasn't talked about football for once. And I hate football. I find it totally boring. I don't even know why I'm talking in a football accent right now, or soccer as you Yanks call it. Well, okay, that's enough of that. So as you can hear, it does pick up a couple of radio stations, but I get this terrible distortion. And I'm not entirely sure what's causing it. Now, I'm supplying this on 12 volts, so if we take them, because I'm powering off one of those wall wart supplies. So you can see there, well, almost 12 volts. I've got this light bulb in series with the power supply, just so just in case something should have gone wrong while I was wiring everything up if that I was like a short circuit somewhere that light bulb will limit the current and hopefully save the circuit now if we take a look at the voltage on the output transistors collector you can see we've only got 1.4 volts and I thought that might be the problem because this is a little over biased but that isn't actually where the problem is. If we take a look at the collector of this transistor, ideally it should be half of what the supply voltage is, or around half the supply voltage, and we've got 5.3 volts there, so that's perfectly fine. But now, let's take a look at the waveforms on the oscilloscope. Okay, so I've got the scope connected up to the collector of the output transistor and I don't know about you but I don't like the look of that waveform at all and I don't know how well you can see it but the top part of the waveform is getting amplified much more than the bottom half we've got some kind of non-linear thing going on there it looks as if it's clipping at the bottom there as well but that could just be because of the that transistor not being biased very well Okay, I've now got the scope connected to the output side of the RF filter. Looks okay, but looks can be deceiving. Strange thing is, the sound, although it doesn't look distorted anymore on this side, it's still distorted if I, uh, if I listen from this part, if I have an amplifier connected up. And finally, let's have a look at the, out, the, the what's on the collector of the first transistor. Looks about the same. Now I should be able to see the radio frequency here. Unfortunately, on my scope it appears very, very blurry. Turn the lights out, you might be able to see it better. Just have a little bit of light so I can see what I'm doing. And how does it sound? Well... But it's very muffled and bassy as you can hear. Just this. Just turn the lows down a bit. 
Some highs up a bit. That's better, but you can still hear that unbearable distortion. And that unbearable song. So you know what? Remember that valve-based regenerative receiver that I made several videos back? Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build that properly and even make a power supply for it. Anyway, there's just one more thing I need to talk about before I wrap this video up. In that little box that you've been seeing throughout this recording, I bet you're wondering what that is. Wow. This might shed some light onto it. Yes, I've made a, another record player preamp for ceramic cartridges. This time, valves. And I'm just going to give this record a little bit of a cool. It's a very simple circuit. It uses a couple of 1941 VT137s, I think, if I remember. And if you look on the back of the circuit, on the inside you can see it's, it's constructed very much like the old vintage audio is. And it's a very, very simple circuit. We just got the signal from the ceramic cartridge going straight into the grid of each valve. I'm supplying this on about 45 volts, which is my maximum my homemade power supply can do. So here's where the power goes in. It goes into the plate of each valve through a 220 kilo ohm resistor. Then the plate of each valve is also connected to these capacitors here, this potentiometer, and then that goes out to the amplifier. And of course the cathodes are connected to ground. So let's give this a listen. Now I've chosen something that shouldn't get me into any copyright issues. I've played this record on my channel before. So I'll just play a little bit of each track so you can hear how it sounds. And I will turn the microphone off while I do this. This thing doing thing. That was morning, you didn't see me doing that. How do we live? What should we take? This thing needs a damn good clean, actually. But anyway, that's just about it. So, yeah, that's what I've been up to. Now, I'm not going to make any more Cool Dude Clem electronic workshop videos. Now, before you say, oh, no, Clem, you're leaving, let me finish. I'm not going to make any more Cool Dude Clem electronic workshop videos until this so-called cyber attack that I've heard about is over because until that's all cleared up I don't want to do any kind of transactions online buying components and things like that because I've got some projects that I am going to do but until all this is over I've kind of lost my train of thought but you know what I'm getting at here until next time and there will be a next time goodbye <laughs>